It is about, I don't even wear a watch. <laughs> <laughs> we made it to Java from Sumatra. It was a three hour flight followed by a three hour taxi. We did manage to get a little bit of sleep. A little, little bit of sleep. We've arrived here in Bromo and we're staying at a homestay. It's 11 p.m. We have three and a half hours to sleep before we get <laughs> up to go to Mount Bromo for sunrise. Yeah, our taxi driver told us to be ready for 2.30 a.m. <laughs> we'll see you in the morning. We'll see you in the morning. <laughs> Oh, it's so cold. Ready for this? Ready as I'll ever be. We're in the Jeep now. We're heading to Mount Bromo. It's just gone 2.30 in the morning. There's so many Jeeps around, it's crazy. We can't believe how many there are given this time of day. So we're kind of stuck in traffic at the minute. We're just gonna make our way to Mount Bromo, but we'll be there for sunrise. We've had a coffee, we've been shielding from the cold, but now we're ready to go to the viewpoint and watch the sunrise. It is so cold. <laughs> Don't underestimate how cold this can be. It's about 12 degrees, but it feels about one degrees. Yeah, there's some really cold winds. We would recommend wrapping up as much as possible. Yeah, bring your jumpers, bring your layers. I have like four or five layers on, I'm still cold. <laughs> Sun's coming up. It is busy here. There's quite a few drones in full force now. A few have been getting in our time lapse, but you know, it's what we do as well, so you can't complain too much. But it is so cool. You enjoying it? I am, I'm just nervous about touching this tripod. <laughs> We're trying to keep this as still as possible. Well, pretty surrounded. That was Mount Bromo at sunrise. How amazing was that? That was so beautiful. Like, so beautiful. I can't even explain. <sighs> Get so out of breath just doing a tiny incline. I think it's because of the altitude. That was awesome. Now, we're gonna head to the volcano <laughs> itself, to one of the craters nearby. Let's go. <laughs> I've never seen this many jeeps before. <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> We've started to see some of these moving, so it's a really good sign that we might be able to leave a lot earlier than most of them up there. We walked for about 10 or 15 minutes at the start and that seems well worth it. People could be waiting for ages. It's so packed up there. to get to the vets because them swans are sick. <laughs> God <laughs> sake. <laughs> We're starting our ascent up to the crater. He said it's two kilometers and we just basically take ourselves up to be honest. Yeah, you can get a horse up, but we're not really about that. I'm um, also wildly allergic. Yeah, incredibly allergic. Incredibly allergic, so definitely not. <laughs> and unless we know how well they're treated, then we're not gonna partake in that. We're gonna go up to the crater and just see the sights. I think it's gonna look awesome. I can't wait to see it from this perspective. Yeah.
Oh, there's so much dust being kicked up into the air. These horses are absolutely everywhere. It's not so bad for me, even though I'm a little bit out of breath. This is literally a nightmare for me. We're so close to the crater, but the mix of the altitude and the horses, my allergy is so bad. I also have asthma and stupidly didn't bring my inhaler. So I'm really struggling up here with the horses. So Matt's gonna take you up to the crater and I'm gonna head back down and hopefully get the jeep to take us to the homestay so I can get my inhaler and breathe again. Yeah, yeah. Man, man. We could see all those horses from where Danielle turned back. Oh, with how bad my breathing is now, to have asthma and bad allergies and a lot of those animals around. Even I can smell the horses in the air. Oh, I feel so sad for Danielle. She wanted nothing more than to be able to make it to the top of here and see this view, but I'll do it for her. Oh, just a few steps to go and then I'm at the top. And I made it. Oh, took a while on those steps, but it looks oh, yeah. so cool. I'm so good to the Danielle could have made it. Miss you, Danielle. Hope you get back safe. I'll show you all the cool shots and videos when I get back. I know that you would have loved this. I just hope you got back okay. I'm sure you did. This is probably one of the scariest reactions I've had because I'm so far from getting my inhaler. Oh, this is a nightmare. <coughs> it's so hard to breathe. So I just got back to the homestay and I feel a lot better. My breathing is a little bit better now. I'm a bit sniffly still from the horses. It was my own fault for not taking my inhaler, but my asthma is so mild that I literally never have to think about it. And I knew there would be horses there, but I didn't realize there would be that many horses. That was really difficult. That's really scary. I've never not been able to breathe like that before. Okay, I need to pull myself together. I've taken an allergy tablet and my inhalers. I'm gonna get changed and just wash my face and stuff. And then I'm gonna head back onto the Jeep and go get that. This has been amazing. I'm so gutted for Danielle that she didn't get to see this. The views from up here are phenomenal. Just being up here is awesome. I did wonder if you'd be able to see the magma of the volcano. Couldn't see any, I think there's too much smoke. I don't know if there is any, but just the views anyway up here are stunning. I will be honest, it smells really bad. That's obviously the sulfur that's coming up from the volcano every so often. It's like smelling salts. You get this real strong hit and it kind of takes your breath away, kind of makes you flinch a little bit, really does pack a punch, hits you right in the nose and that lasts for a while and that's usually when you see a lot of smoke coming out from the bottom. I don't know how healthy it is to be up here for prolonged periods of time and because of that, I'm gonna head back down now. Danielle has messaged me somehow you get full 4g signal up here she got back to the car safe we're good to carry on the rest of the trip she did just miss out on this bit she still gets to come here and witness it it's still an amazing place to be i'm sure she'll say the exact same thing oh it really does smell bad everyone's coughing i can feel it in my throat
I'm back at the point where Danielle turned around. Still a long way to go. Just gotta avoid slipping. There's this really fine dust in the air. <laughs> Literally nearly just slipped on it then. I think it must be ash and it's like really soft, fine sand. That's the closest thing I can describe it to. It's like if sand was silk and it's really slippy. Oh, it's only my eyes. I'm back at where the car's parked, but I don't know where it's parked. They've been back to the apartment, obviously got the things that Danielle needed, and now they've come back. She sent me some description, uh, but I gotta go find it amongst all this. Okay, found it. That was easy. We got there. We are reunited and I managed to make myself feel a little bit better thanks to my inhalers. I made it back to the base of Bromo and met Matt when he came back down. It looked incredible from the footage. I'm so gutted I missed it. There's a reason Bromo is listed as one of the number one things to do in Indonesia and we found that out today yeah. because it's spectacular, it's amazing. Absolute must for sunrise, it's so beautiful. 100% worth getting up for, it's an early morning but definitely do it. Yes. Join us next week on part two of our Java series and we're heading to Tumpak Suu. And it's going to be another very early morning for us. See you next week.